Welcome to the Steve Stein Guitar Podcast, brought to you by GuitarZoom.com. If you want to improve your guitar playing, keep listening. If you want to improve even faster, go to GuitarZoom.com, where you'll find all of Steve's premium courses, masterclasses, and memberships that'll help you quickly and easily improve your playing. Now, here's your host, Steve Stein. making sure everything works and we'll go ahead and get started, okay? What we're gonna be doing today, I'm running a little bit low on time today, but over the weekend, I was thinking about how a lot of times when I practice at home, when I'm sitting with my family and we're watching TV, hey Susan, hey Con, I'll sit and practice, but I won't practice with an amp or something, I'll just sit on the couch with my guitar and I'll play. And I started thinking about how a lot of times when I'm traveling, I do the same thing. I'll travel and I might be on the plane and I might be practicing, I use this little guitar neck called a shred neck, which I didn't bring today, but I will bring it sometime and show it to you. Hey, Stanlin, Stee is here, Doug is here, Mike is here, hey everybody. So what I thought I would do today is maybe break down some ideas of things that I try and work on to synchronize my hands better. So there's three different categories and we're gonna work on one of those categories today. Hey, Ralph, hey, Mark, hey, Wes. So the first one is, is that we've got a left hand. I shouldn't say left hand, I should say our uh, fretting hand, right? Our fretting hand. And that's not what we're going to talk about today. What we're going to do today is we're going to talk about our picking hand. We're going to talk about some things that might work very well for that, okay? So what I want you to do is think about this. The next time you're sitting around and you don't want to bother anybody or maybe you don't have an amp nearby or just using an acoustic guitar or whatever it might be, what you're going to do is you're going to take that guitar pick. Oh, and one more thing too. Sometime in the near future here, I've got a channel switcher that's been on order for like three months. So I'll be able to actually switch my camera angle, so I'll be able to do close-ups and things like that. But it hasn't shown up yet. Since I've moved into my studio, I ordered this thing a long time ago, and I'm still waiting for it to show up. So eventually that will get here, and once it does, then I'll actually be able to switch camera angles, and you can see close-ups and things like that. We're just not there yet. Hey, Tyler. Hey, Larry. Paul is here. Brett Nelson is here. Tony is here. John is here. So let's just go through this quick. I don't want to take too much of your time. And I got to go live after a little while again here, so I got to get prepared for that too. But let's say, for instance, you were working on something. Let's say you're working on a pattern like this. Where you're trying to get used to doing three notes on one string and then one note on the next string, right? Wherever it might be on the guitar. Anywhere you'd like to be. What I like to do is I like to take that idea and break it down and separate the parts out. So if we think about it, we have to figure out what is the slowest of the two hands when we're trying to develop various ideas on the guitar. And it could be all kinds of different things. I'll show you sweeping and different things in just a second here too. So let's say for instance, I wanted to do that, but what I wanna do is focus on my picking hand. So I have to think about the fact that I'm going down, up, down, and then up on the next string, whatever two strings you're using. And that's what I want to start working on is trying to develop that. Now, there's all kinds of things about how to practice. Like, do you practice it slow and with a metronome? And then if you go on YouTube and you look up my name and you look up the term bursting or burst, you're going to find a video where I talk about how to practice things fast, too, because sometimes practicing it slow isn't always the answer. It, It depends on the situation. But let's just bypass all of that for right now and just think about the fact that when we're playing... What we're trying to do in this particular case is we're trying to get used to being able to play three notes or three picks on a string. So we're playing down, up, down, right? So we have to get comfortable with just being able to think about how that feels and feel the down beginning and the down ending. And that's kind of what you're focusing on. Right? And you do that over and over and over, and you just kind of lose yourself in that practice of trying to just get that down, up, down to work. Now, the trick is, is the next one, the upstroke that comes in. For me, again, we could get into economy picking and all kinds of different things, but just bear with me for now. And then adjust it to whatever it is you're trying to do. So as I do this, and I do that upstrum, What I'm going to do is instead of trying to practice both of these hands together, I'm just going to isolate the picking for now and develop, is that where my problem is? Am I having a hard time playing down, up, down, and then down, up, down, up to make that connection, right? And then I could go into left hand or fretting hand, which we'll probably do next week for our money motivation. 
But I want to separate these and figure out where the problem is, isolate the problem, and then fix it. Right? So I do that over and over and over, and this is where maybe my pick angle, right, or different kinds of things like that, I might start thinking about some things like that to try and figure out what's the best way to approach this to make that work. Just over and over and over, just trying to make that function. So you might do that with two notes, or you might do that with three note, anything like that. The most important thing here is, is that you're trying to just isolate a particular technique to figure out how you could do it better, instead of just sort of mushing the two together, the two hands, and hoping that everything works. Sometimes when you do that, it's okay, it might work great, but you might also encounter that you're not able to overcome a certain speed or a certain element of your technique, and if you break apart your two hands and figure out what's going on, that can help you enormously. So let's think about, for instance, like sweeping, for instance. Let's say I did this. Now, we know that if we're practicing something like a sweep or an arpeggio, we call it, right? When I do... There's lots of different ways I can approach trying to do something like an arpeggio or a sweep, but one thing that I want to do... Let's just say I'm starting from the fifth string and I'm going through the first string. I want to start getting used to two things. Number one, coming to rest on the next adjacent string as I go. And learning to have control. And notice how I'm just deadening the strings as I do this. I want to gain control as I do that, so I'm not just kind of pushing through, but I'm actually trying to get this... So now again, I'm stopping on each string as I go. Now, all the time when I'm doing something like an arpeggio or a sweep, I'm not always stopping on the adjacent string. So the other thing that happens is that you get used to just flowing through like you're strumming, right? So when you do that, it's a little bit different technique. So let's say we were doing something where maybe I'm going like this. We'll just do just something like that. So now I'm just doing 10, 9, 7, 8, 7. Just Something like that. Now, obviously, as I do that, both my hands are trying to work in conjunction with each other to make this happen. But you can see how if I separate those out, because I can't just go, right? I can't just strum it like I would a chord unless this hand is capable of going at that same speed. They have to find this happy medium to make this work. So as I'm doing this arpeggio, I'm going to do one of two things. Either I'm going to come to rest on the next string in line, or I'm going to control it and just machine it through like this as I play. I'm not going to rest. I'm just going to kind of push through. And they're two very different techniques if you haven't thought about that before when you play. So as you're trying to do these sorts of things, it's very important to think about that. Now let's keep going with some other stuff. I want to get to a few other things that I try and practice that I think would be really great for you guys. So one is this. Let's say you're trying to practice, for instance, doing alternate picking, okay? So there's a few different things that you could do with alternate picking. And again, I apologize, I don't have a close-up shot of this at this point, but just do the best you can. Of course, you can watch this later if you need to. So as I'm playing here, let's say I'm alternate picking, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a down-up on each string. So I'm going down-up. You see that? Now, it's harder than you think. Like when you go... It's easier when you add in this other hand, okay? So it's, it's just a great practice for me. I love doing this sort of thing. So what I'm doing is going... So down, up, down, up. On each string. And as I go... I might practice each string going back up this direction, right? Something like that. Or you might string skip. If you ever do any string skipping stuff, maybe you go... Like that. Or maybe you just do one note on each string. 
You see? And you could just practice these things over and over and over without an amplifier or anything like that, just defining what it is that you know that you need work on and then just sitting there and practicing it. Let's say you're trying to do something like you're trying to learn how to hybrid pick using your finger. So you're trying to develop a pattern for you to use. Now, oftentimes when we hybrid pick, we're using a lot of legato in there as well. And a lot of times we might even jump over strings. So let's say we were going to do something where we're using our pick and our middle finger at the same time. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to develop a pattern where I'm going to go fourth string, and then I'm going to use my middle finger on the second string. And then I'm going to go to the third string with my pick, and then the first string with my middle finger. So I have... And I've just practiced that over and over and over. And I know that probably sounds terrible on your side of things, but you get the idea. Right? So I'm going pick on the four, middle finger on the two, pick on the three, middle finger on the one. And then to round this out, I might go back to pick on the third, middle finger on the second. You see, and you can practice that over and over and over just sitting there practicing just what's going on with your picking hand, whatever it is that you're trying to do. Or just two strings. Or maybe you do a triplet pattern, like that. But see, now what I'm doing is I'm doing that triplet I showed you at the beginning, or that three note per string pattern. And the second time, I'm jumping over a string. You see, in that way I can just get used to the things that are happening with my picking hand and then bring in my fretting hand and work on things with that, which we'll do next time. We'll do that on Monday next week. But see if you can't develop this into something that works for you as a daily practice routine, certainly over the next week. See if you can't find a few of these patterns. And if you can, do me a favor, make a comment after this live session. If you've been practicing, come on back and make a comment on it. Let me see what kinds of things that you've been working on or if it's been helping you. So anyway, I hope that helps you. That's going to be it for today. I hope you have a wonderful week. It's very, very cold here in North Dakota. I hear it's pretty cold across most of the United States right now. But anyway, stay positive, keep practicing, and I'll talk to you all very, very soon, okay? Next time on the Steve Stein Guitar Podcast, what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about 12-bar blues, understanding 12-bar blues, the basics of understanding 12-bar blues, which also means we're going to have to understand some basics of theory, but I'm going to make it super easy for you, okay? So what we're going to do is, to start off, um, we're going to talk about the, the construction. Now, what makes blues different than a lot of other styles of music is when you say something like rock, or you say metal, or you say jazz, or you say country, you're talking about all kinds of different things, and most certainly when you say blues, you are too. But there's a, a common language that we use with blues, which is what we refer to as the 12-bar blues. Now, blues doesn't have to be 12, 12 bars means 12 measures, 12 measures long. Blues doesn't have to be 12 measures long. It can do all kinds of different things. And I always tell people, like with students, I tell them, there's a difference between something being blues and being bluesy. Like ACDC did a couple of songs that were blues, but most of their music is very bluesy, right? You see the difference? Um, you know, Led Zeppelin played bluesy songs, but on occasions they played blues songs. And then you have people like Muddy Waters or Buddy Guy or B.B. King or whoever that played a lot of blues songs, right? So what's really great about blues, especially in teaching uh, students about soloing and things like that, is there's parameters, there's more parameters to it than there are when somebody just says rock or something like that. So what we want to do is understand that when we talk about blues, one of the, one of the things we want to learn is this system called a 12-bar blues or 12-measure blues. Um, and what, what's great about that is, is once we learn it, we can predict when the chord changes are happening and know what those chord changes are and then respond to that with our playing, you see? So when we talk about blues, the first thing to understand is that when we say 12 measures, what we're doing is we're talking about this. And I'm just going to play through the 12-bar blues very quick here so you can kind of understand this. Steve says, can you explain how the 8 or 16? Absolutely. We can get into that. Uh, how 8 or 16 is different than 12-bar. So if I start off with just this 12 bar, just turn down my volume a little bit here, and I'm going to play in G. So what I'm going to do is play a 12 measure sequence going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, Nine, ten, 
and then the 12th measure. And then it starts all over again. If you enjoyed today's podcast and want to learn guitar even faster, go to guitarzoom.com and click the Get Started button to get access to courses that are right for your interest and skill level. Again, go to guitarzoom.com and click the Get Started button.